Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. We've got a very important town hall, and we're going to be discussing some things that we want everyone to hear about. We have some special guests as well. This is the Wyoming Freedom Caucus, and we have two members of the Freedom Caucus here, as well as our executive director. And we have two guests. Our premier guest tonight is Harriet Hageman, congressman for the state of Wyoming. And I'll get into her particulars in just a moment. But uh, Sherry Steinmetz, a senator uh, from the Torrington area uh, for the state of Wyoming. And Chip Nyman, uh, my my counterpart in the Chip and Bear show. And uh, we'll, we'll get going here real quickly. So Congresswoman uh, Harriet Hageman is a member of the Judiciary Committee. She's also on the subcommittee for wep weaponization of the federal government, as well as several other subcommittees. And she's on the House Committee for Natural Resources, which, considering the subject tonight, that'll be important for us to get her perspective on how these, uh, these new asset companies are going to affect our natural resources. Uh, State Senator Steinmetz is the chairman of the Ag Committee in the Senate. She's also the vice chair of the Education Committee in the Senate. And Representative Nyman is the majority floor leader in the House of Representatives in the state of Wyoming. Jesse Rabino is the executive director of the uh, Wyoming Freedom Caucus for the State Network Freedom Caucuses. And I am John Baer, representative for House District 31 and chairman of the Wyoming Freedom Caucus. Tonight's subject, we're going to talk about natural asset companies. If you haven't heard it in the news, you will soon, because this is becoming a very, very big issue. And Representative Hageman has been working on this feverishly in Washington, D.C., on behalf of you, the people. So with that, I want to ask uh, Harriet to join us and start telling us a little bit about the efforts that she's given uh, and been working on in uh, Washington, D.C. And if you could just give us an overview of what a uh, natural asset corporation is and how these things came about in the first place. So thank you, Chip uh, and John and, and Sherry and, and all of you. Thank you for having me this evening uh, to talk about natural asset companies. This is something that I think is one of the biggest land grabs that we've seen quite possibly in the history of our country. Where this came about is the, Secur the Security Exchange Commission issued a ruling or, an, or a proposed regulation, a proposed rule at the very end of September last year. And the purpose of the proposed rule was to adopt a regulation so that they could set up what are called natural asset companies on the New York Stock Exchange. And I'm just going to read to you from that particular rule. Now, it was very clear to me when this came about um, I, I, my office jumped on it immediately. I think we were probably the first ones back here in Washington, D.C. that understood what these things could potentially do and, and how damaging and destructive they could be. And so we immediately started looking into this and doing additional research. We eventually sent a letter to the SEC because the SEC, unlike almost any other rulemaking I, got, I had ever seen, they only gave 21 days notice for this particular rule and a comment period, which is just absolutely unheard of. Usually they're at least 60 days, sometimes 90 or 120 days. They gave 21 days notice on this, so they were trying to slip it through. I'm just gonna read from the, from the proposed rule what it is that they're attempting to set up on the New York Stock Exchange. It states that the exchange states that its proposal is intended to end the overconsumption of and underinvestment in nature, which requires bringing natural assets into the mainstream. And the NACs are a new concept pioneered by Intrinsic Exchange Incorporated. IEG is a private company structured as a corporation organized under the laws of Delaware. The New York Stock Exchange proposes that NACs would be corporations that hold the rights to the ecological performance produced by natural or working areas, such as national reserves or large scale farmlands, and have the authority to manage the areas for conservation, restoration, or sustainable management. That the NACs would be expected to license these rights from sovereign nations or private landowners. 
It goes on to state that the NAC's initial uh, public offerings are follow-on offerings and must be used to implement the conservation, restoration, or sustainable management plans art articulated in its prospectus, fund its ongoing operations, or otherwise fulfill its purpose to maximize ecological performance, i.e. the value of natural assets in the production of ecosystem services. The way that these things would work is that these natural asset companies would be set up and they would be able to purchase the uh, rights to say the natural assets of Yellowstone National Park or Medicine Bow National Forest or any lands on any private lands that have a conservation easement on them. So uh, Bill Gates, let's say that he owns an NAC or the, or the country of China. They could come in and they could buy the natural assets of Yellowstone National Park, and then they would be responsible for making sure that those natural assets would never be developed. So it would stop everything related to any kind of use of these lands whatsoever, grazing, mineral development, uh, any kind of, of, of mining, any kind of oil and gas exploration, even recreation. But essentially what we have here is that the New York Stock Exchange and these various radical environmental groups have realized that their ESG efforts are not moving fast enough. So they came up with this idea where they're going to buy these natural, they're going to set up these natural asset companies, buy the so-called natural assets and make it so that we can never develop these lands again through into perpetuity. And they even talk about that, that they would protect these lands from any type of development into perpetuity. So for a state like Wyoming, it could cover all of our BLM lands. It could cover all of our National Forest Service lands. It could cover our Park Service lands. And it could cover any private property that has a conservation easement on it. So basically, it is the Bill Gates of the world. They even talk about how the way that they value these companies is to use metrics that have been developed by the United Nations. Um, this is one of the most radical, radical things that I have ever seen, and it is so far outside of the authority of both the New York Stock Exchange, as well as the, secure, the, the, the security at the, the SEC, the Securities Exchange Commission. So this is something that is not only illegal as all get out, but it is potentially going to be extremely destructive to the Western United States, because that's where most of these lands are, are, are located. So once we found out what they were doing, I immediately introduced a, an amendment to one of the appropriations bills to defund their, the SEC's ability to move forward with this regulation. Um, right now, all of our appropriations bills are kind of gummed up with the Senate as we're trying to deal with the budget issues. So that stuff isn't moving right now. So the other thing that we did is in December, I, uh, I, I worked with 30 of my colleagues in the House of Representatives, including Matt Rosendale from Montana, Glenn uh, Thompson, uh, he's the head of the, of the, the Ag Committee, uh, Bill Posey, Keith Self from Texas. I worked with, with congressmen and women from all across the United States. And we sent a letter to the SEC demanding that they answer some of our questions as to how this entire thing would operate, as well as to extend the time for comments. They have, in fact, extended the time for comments. Comments are now due on the 18th of, of January. And if there's any rebuttal, those the, the rebuttal comments are due the first part of February. I would encourage everybody who is on this call to engage, participate, and start submitting comments. Um, just yesterday, uh, we had uh, uh, numerous states, including the state of Wyoming, there was an effort led by the state of Utah and Kansas, the attorney generals, uh, Sean Reyes from Utah and Chris Kobach from Kansas, and they have a letter signed by, it looks to be about 25 or more um, state attorneys general, including Bridget Hill from Wyoming, uh, I outlining all of the ways in which this is an uh, this is a, a land grab, this is a power grab, it's illegal, uh, it is not provided for in the New York Stock Exchange rules, it's well outside of the authority of the SEC. But essentially what this comes down to is the SEC is attempting to assume authority over all of our federal lands in the United States for purposes of securitizing them and monetizing them to sell them to people like 
Bill Gates or countries like China or the Chinese Communist Party so that they can tie up and prevent us and prohibit us and, and block us from ever being able to access and use these lands or to be able to do any kind of mineral or oil and gas development of any sort whatsoever. So when I say this is a big deal, when I first started getting into this, I had no idea of how bad this was. As I've learned more, as I've been studying it, and as I've been going through all of these materials, this is one of the most frightening things that I've ever seen our government attempt to do. Uh, this is ra this is this is so far beyond radical that I don't even think six months ago or a year ago people would have it, it would have even been within their mindset that something like this could could even happen that they would even attempt something like this. It's such a blatant violation of the Federal Land Policy Management Act, the National Forest Service Act. All all of those things, but this is yet another effort for them to tie up our assets and make us poorer. Uh, the way that I would describe this, and I and I think this is terminology that we should be using. Um, what we're seeing in this country right now, especially among the radical left, uh, the liberals, the progressives, the Democrats, is we are seeing yeah, forced scarcity. Um, engineered scarcity. That is what this is about. And this is just one more step. This is one more effort in that regard. Uh, forced or engineered scarcity. It is not natural. I can't even imagine any country on planet Earth that would do something this radical. But this is what this administration is attempting to do. So with that as background, maybe we can take some questions or I can focus on specific uh, issues that you may have. Yes, Harriet, thank you very much. I really appreciate that overview. That was very in-depth as well. And it made me think of, of one thing that uh, I'd really like you to discuss further. And that is, it seems that this whole process with the Securities Exchange Commission is really uh, going around Congress. Because as you know, uh, as a member of the House Committee on uh, Natural Resources, you should have a say on that committee as to the locking up of resources. And yet here, this, uh, this organization is going to be able to do that without going through Congress. What are your thoughts on why they went around Congress? And uh, whether uh, you did mention you thought that this was illegal, uh, will this bring challenges and can it be stopped? So a couple of things. One is what I have found in terms of dealing, uh, living in and, and, and working in Washington, D.C., is that the vast majority of the agenda of the radical left, which is who is in power right now, including Joe Biden and everybody who works in his administration, the vast majority of what they're trying to do to our country, they cannot get through Congress. They simply cannot. And this is an example of that. So they either use the courts or they use administrative agencies. And that's what we're seeing here. So they know that Congress would never approve anything this radical, that we would never, I, I mean, this truly has the potential of affecting uh, 600 million acres of land in this country. I, I mean, that's how big this is. They would have the ability literally to stop our coal mining in, in Campbell County, Wyoming walk in, sell the natural assets to those BLM lands and those and 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 those mineral rights, and literally walk in and, and pursue it to this this paradigm that they have set up, this business model they've set up, and stop any kind of development, access and use whatsoever. Do I think it's going to be challenged in the courts if it goes forward? Yes. I'm also hoping, though, we got people awake enough, fast enough, and engaged enough that we might be able to get them to back down uh, so that they are not trying to pursue this through the New York Stock Exchange. We have really been banging the drum back here. And I think we've probably made some people pretty doggone nervous as to the validity of this. Um, I would encourage all of you to read the January 9th letter, as I said, that was submitted by the attorney generals, just to give you an idea of how incredibly crazy that this is. They describe how this would be set up, and I'm going to read some more of this. Um, <clears throat> the New York Stock Exchange proposed rule uh, change runs contrary to the justified purpose and should be disproved. The New York Stock Exchange proposes to add to its listed company manual, <laughs> excuse me, permitting the listing of common equity securities of natural asset companies. According to the proposed rule, an NEC is for the purpose 
of proposed subsection 10209, a corporation whose primary purpose is to actively manage, maintain, restore as applicable and grow the value of natural assets and their production of ecosystem services. Notably, the proposed rule characterizes the distinct purpose of an NAC as protecting and growing the natural, natural assets under its management. It also explicitly defines the term natural asset companies as corporations that hold the rights to the ecological performance of a defined area and have the authority to manage the areas for conservation, restoration, or sustainable management. A lot of this stuff is just gobbledygook, but um, there are a couple of cases that have come down from the Supreme Court in the last year and a half. One is the West Virginia case, and the other one is the Sackett decision from last, week, last year, last March. Both of them relate to the EPA, but the, the uh, Supreme Court is clearly recognizing that, these agent, that the authority of these agencies is defined and limited. It is not unlimited. And it's one of the issues that this letter addresses very well, saying there is nowhere in our history that Congress gave the SEC the authority to set up natural asset companies. This is a direct violation of the New York Stock Exchange's own manual. It is contrary to what has ever been considered a valid company. Uh, the fraud is going to be absolutely off the charts with this. Uh, some of the numbers that the that the New York or that the um, that the SEC is throwing out there is that this is worth as much as five trillion dollars a year in terms of shutting down development. That that's the value of the development that they are potentially going to block through these uh, natural asset companies. And so clearly, what <clears throat> they themselves admit that there's that kind of an economic impact. I cannot imagine that the courts are going to find that they have the legal authority to do this. Thank you for that. I, you know, uh, when you think about those dollars, and I've heard as much as $125 trillion for the economy-wide for the United States, and you think about those dollars, really what we're seeing here is, is Wall Street pitted against private landowners, all ag, all minerals extraction, uh, and so many uh, sportsmen that want to use these lands are going to be pitted against big money and Wall Street. You know, I think about how often we hear we need to get the money out of politics, but it looks to me like now we need to get the politics out of money because we're trying to control a whole market. And it's a, just a political thing, whether, you know, you're going to uh, improve the environment. This is a, this is clearly a, a divided political battle in our country. And I, I just, you know, when I think about the cost versus benefit here for the average citizen in the United States, you you look at the fact that uh, everything is going to be more expensive because we're going to add this new market on top of everything else with no new production, no new goods or services are going to be produced as this market is added on top of our current market. And what is the benefit to all of the citizens who are paying more for everything and I, I, I can imagine that best case, maybe one degree cooler by 2100. Is that worth what this is going to do to our economy? Not to mention, as you, you talk about foreign actors, uh, the security of being able to shut down our production, uh, our ability to uh, uh, just to survive, uh, you know, food production, everything else will be impacted and governments uh, outside of the borders of the United States will be able to weaken uh, our country and our economy. That's that's a, a scary, scary thing. Back well, to your letter, I, I just wanted to ask you to share with us, you know, some of the other congressmen that have joined you in your letter, and we really appreciate your being the lead on that, but how much traction are you getting in Congress on this? Um, people recognize how incredibly dangerous this is, and I had a gentleman from Texas come up to me um, at sessions just this afternoon, and he said, I heard that you're the one taking the lead on this NAC stuff. I want to be involved with that, so you let me know whatever it is you need me to do, and I'm on, I'm on board. Whether it's a bill, an amendment, a letter, you let me know I'm on board. Uh, some of the people, Dan Newhouse from Washington, Paul Gosar from Arizona, Mary Miller from Illinois, Jeff Duncan, Byron Donalds from Florida. So we have everybody from Washington to Florida. We have the entire breadth of the company uh, country, as I said, Pete Sauber from Minnesota, 
uh, Kathy McMorris Rogers, Eli Crane from Arizona, Tom Tiffany from Wisconsin, uh, Keith Self and Randy Weber from Texas, uh, Buddy Carter, uh, Russ Fulcher from Idaho. So a very broad spectrum of individuals signed on to that letter. And they're really allowing us to kind of take the lead, um, which is great because we have been running with this. And then I also am working with Bruce Westerman on the, um, he's the chairman of the Natural Resource Committee. We're going to be sending a letter to the SEC demanding much more information and specific questions, such as all of the documents exchanged between the SEC and the New York Stock Exchange on this. The other thing to keep in mind is that, they, that the, um, the SEC admits that these companies are not going to turn a profit and that there's no way to actually assess or evaluate the benefits or the economic benefits that they provide. So this company that has come up with this idea, this intrinsic exchange group, is run by a radical environmentalist, a very wealthy man who wants to be wealthier and use our money to do it. Um, but they're going to be the ones that are going to be tasked with valuing uh, the benefits associated with protecting these natural assets. And I can assure you, because they don't have to comply with anything related to accounting, because there is no accounting. This has nothing to do with economics. This has nothing to do with actually delivering goods or services. It has everything to do with what I said a moment ago, which is engineered scarcity um, and, and, and attempting to block us from, from accessing the resources that we own. That's the, uh, the irony of this is these federal lands don't belong to these people. They don't belong to Tracy Stone Manning at the BLM. They belong to us. Going back to the point that you were making, I, I want to read a quote that I have been reading uh, whenever I have the opportunity, because I think it's very important for us to frame this argument the way it needs to be framed. And this is the because we're dealing with a religion. We're dealing with people who are part of a radical environmental religion who are willing to destroy everything in order to save it, because that's ultimately what happens here. Third world countries don't care about the environment. It's just that simple. We're able to protect our environment because we have the economic and financial wherewithal to do so. The moment we destroy our economy, nobody cares about the environment. The, the, the moment that people are starving, nobody cares about uh, protecting the, the whooping crane in central Nebraska. I mean, that's just the reality of it. So it's also a level of ignorance where you 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 they really are destroying the golden goose, that the, the goose that laid the golden egg by destroying our environment by loving it to death and preventing us from being able to access it and use it. But I think this is a really good quote, which is the notion that government should impoverish actual human beings as a means of promoting the welfare of humanity is a pagan superstition on par with sacrificing individuals to the sun god. Wow. Well, with that, I go ahead. The notion that government should impoverish actual human beings as a means of promoting the welfare of humanity is a pagan superstition on par with sacrificing individuals to the sun god. That's exactly what they're doing. They are sacrificing us to Mother Gaia, to the sun god. That's what this is about. Wow. Thank you very much. I, I want to get on to uh, Senator Steinmetz and... Uh, give her a chance to weigh in on this. That was a, a great quote, and we'll let that sink in now. Um, Senator Steinmetz, uh, I'd just like to hear from you. You know, I think when we think back, uh, uh, how long has this been going on? And I think back to the uh, uh, Agenda 21. It seems like that was the beginning that I had ever heard of anything like this. Uh, take us from from Agenda 21 and and tell us your thoughts. Well, thank you, John, and I appreciate the opportunity to be here today and visit about this important discussion. And thank you, Harriet, for your hard work on, on this. And I want to thank Treasurer Meyer as well. I know he's joined the Treasurer of Utah, and they've they've come out in full force against this as well. So a shout out to him. You know, Agenda 21, it was uh, they were looking to lock up huge swaths of land back then. This has always been the goal. Uh, they've gone through several reiterations of it. I remember when I first got started in politics that that was a part of it. They were trying to come in and do some zoning and we were the pilot project for all of that and they were trying to shut down 
large swaths of land back then and have put very onerous zoning on all of us. And so that's kind of how I, I've been following this for several years and watching it, uh, its reiterations each time that we go down another rabbit hole or they try to find another way once the public gets onto them, then they seem to rebrand and come back another direction. But it is the way that, you know, when you start talk, talking about getting to net zero, decarbonizing the West, that CO2 is a pollutant and going off of that false premise, this is where it leads you because they're trying to create a low carbon e economy. And that's, that's how this all plays in with this global cap and trade scheme that we're now seeing uh, try to invade our, our SEC and the New York Stock Exchange. And for example, uh, we had a tour of the University of Wyoming and they're doing some work on uh, uh, carbon credits right now and trying to make sure that ranchers know exactly what they're getting into when they're selling carbon credits they would have to put a conservation easement on their land and then Delta Airlines is the one buying most of those carbon credits and Delta doesn't change any of how it's doing business or how it's operating and so we're basically regulating the wrong people and when you talk about management of the land you know our our forests they used to be a carbon sinks and now they're carbon emitters because of the mismanagement of the federal government that's not about to get any better and then you sit there and look at the Rock Springs RMP proposed by the BLM, the Plan B that is non-use. That's that's one of the ways that they would monetize the carbon leasing and, and sell it through the New York Stock Exchange. So that's some of the history. Agenda 21 has been around for a long time. They've been after this goal for a long time. But now in our day, we're seeing it really come to fruition in a lot of very alarming ways. Yes, absolutely. And, and I, I didn't hear, did you say 30 by 30 as well? This is the, the new iteration of Agenda 21, it seems? Oh, absolutely. 30 by 30 is a huge part of it. Um, you know, uh, the, tw the 50 by 50 is the next reiteration, 50% of the, the land by 2050. So they just keep and that's the other thing. They keep moving the goalposts. What will ever satisfy these people? As Harriet pointed out, it's a religion. So, you know, nothing ever will. And yet there's a lot of people in it to make money. Let's. I, I think they said the whole total amount of this is five quadrillion to put this new asset category on the New York Stock Exchange. Five quadrillion is what the treasurer of Utah was was quoted as saying. And so every aspect of this will make all of our commodities, everything that we do use, buy, uh, sell, it, the ripple effect. Um, if we think we've seen inflation now, this is nothing. Sure. And yeah, and if you see the, you know, the BLM RMP and what that looks like for the state of Wyoming for the economy, I think they initial numbers were 100 million a year just with that uh, 3.5 million acres of land that they're trying to shut down. We're already in a huge fight on that. And I'm thankful that uh, our Ag Committee has really stepped up in that area. We have a, a flagship bill running this year that would allow us to, we've asked, we're requesting $50 million we've appropriated to engage in these types of battles. We started out with federal overreach and now we're seeing this being a quite larger than that even. And so we've appropriated $50 million and we've reasserted the legislature as a co-equal branch of government and the state of Wyoming as a sovereign state. It is up to us to, to say what the lands within our borders, what should be done with them. Under this proposal, state, local governments, all of those folks, they could monetize all of the lands, any any government held, any private, it's not limited to just national parks, BLM. It's anyone who wants to participate in this. And taking large swaths of, of federal land, 48% of our surface is federally controlled and 65% of our minerals, that will have an effect on every piece of private land in this in this state as well. So the the threat is real. Um, my husband, who works in securities and exchanges, can't can't even fathom 
that someone would try to do this. It's so far outside the norm of what the SEC normally does or how our, you know, our financial markets even work. Um, it, it, I just, I, I think we're all in shock and I'm so thankful for a, a team like this to work on this issue together. Well, thank you for your leadership on that effort to uh, to put a, a sizable amount of money toward the state of Wyoming defending itself against the federal government on that Rocky Mountain or the uh, RMP down in uh, Rock Springs. So uh, we do appreciate your leadership on that. Uh, it seems amazing. Five hundred uh, or five could quadrillion dollars. You said I don't hear that very often, and you know, uh, you know, people uh, have been critical of of getting in front of this issue and putting money up for that lawsuit. I appreciate that you've done it because I think they're going to wake up very soon and realize um, we should have gotten ahead of it even sooner. And so, thank you for doing that. Um, we're going to run out of time here quickly. I want to get the majority floor leader on, and then uh, we're going to take at least one question from the audience. And uh, we'll have Jesse uh, do that for us, bring that up in just a moment after the majority floor leader speaks. But uh, Chip, I'd, I'd like you to come on and, and just share with us uh, what what would what do you think that the people of Wyoming should be doing about this, if, if anything? And uh, uh, if you want to add anything about how you as a rancher feel like you're going to be affected by this. Well, thank you, John. And I do. I want to I want to especially thank Harriet for her leadership. Uh, in this and and her her expertise in this area and recognizing exactly what is at stake and her ability to be able to coalesce people to be able to to stand up against this ob obvious uh, taking of our ability to be able to produce food and fiber to be able to protect them and provide the necessary means of security for this nation because of, to me John ultimately and to the panel uh, this is this is an outright assault on our nation. I mean, this is something we've thought about a little bit. You've heard about pieces coming, but I've never really seen anything quite this dramatic um, just thrust on the scene and, and monetizing biological process. Uh, we're looking at a way of being able to take what God created to be able to clean our environment, our ability to be able to have crops growing and, and running them through plants and to be able to add and tie a monetary figure to that, which equates back to individuals being able to, to, to generate revenue from that. And especially scary to me is the fact that we have nations that are that are definitely working diligently to destroy this country that can now be provided with an opportunity to be able to tie up massive swaths of land across our United States and, and completely halt its ability to be able to be utilized to grow food and to be able to, uh, to be producing uh, jobs and security, oil produced, timber for our homes and and uh, food for our table, for our nation. And so what easier way to be able to destroy the United States than to be able to rob its ability to be able to take care of itself and to provide for its people. So this is something I think we have to be absolutely uh, immediately involved in. And we will have uh, on the website here the contact information that you can have. And I would encourage everyone, contact our governor contact our attorney general, contact again and support our uh, secretary of state and our treasurer, our attorney general, uh, encourage them to fight as hard as they possibly can and to stand up against this obvious attack on our nation. I mean, we're you're trying to use money, basically going back to the idea that they'll take us without firing a shot. Well, then they can buy us into submission and take away our ability to be able to produce what we need to be able to be sovereign and to be the leader that the United States is called to be. And so um, look at that site there. Uh, Jesse's brought it up for all of us. The comments, get a hold of the SEC, uh, the New York Stock Exchange. Um, by all means, please, again, contact our governor. Let your representatives know, your state representatives and uh, our, our national representatives. Harriet's already taken the lead on this. I'm so thankful for her leadership in this, but our senators also need to be contacted and let them know that we have to be on the forefront of this, stopping this before it can get started. Because uh, folks, let's just be honest here. America's at stake. Our ability to be able to survive is at stake. And and uh, so by all means, get a hold of the website and be reminded that uh, that it takes you getting involved in the process to be able to halt this overreach and this uh, destruction of our nation if we don't do something about it. So thank you, John. Thank you, Chip. And uh, I'm just going to quickly move into uh, 
uh, a question from the audience, and so we can get that and and give the panel an opportunity to address that. But uh, we will have that website in the comments of this video as well. So uh, if you didn't see it flash on the screen, we will have that in the comments. Uh, Jesse, would you mind come on and uh, tell us uh, what kind of question we've got from the audience? And we, you're going to have to pick the best one for now. Uh, we will try to get to your questions later. Uh, and so put them in the comments and we will uh, we'll get to those uh, at a later time if, if we didn't get to your question tonight. Thanks, John. So um, a really important question that I saw, um, how might the NACs affect conservation easements in Wyoming? considering the fact that the legislature often funds them with the um, large project bills that you see? Well, the way that this is written is that lands that are subject to conservation easements can also be included in these portfolios. One of the things that is that, that that's so bad about this is that many of the terms that are included in, and these, these are new terms being thrown out there. This is an entirely new concept, what they're trying to do but they haven't defined all of the terms. And I think that they're doing that intentionally so that it gives them maximum flexibility so that they can then decide how all of this is going to play out. But what they're going to do is, you were talking a little bit about it, the way that they're going to make money on this is they're going to start um, uh, claiming carbon credits for this. So if, they, if we don't develop in Yellowstone National Park and Bill Gates owns the natural assets to Yellowstone National Park, then you're going to have to buy chips from him. You're going you're gonna to have to pay him for his natural assets. And so the reason that they included lands with conservation easements is because they already have restrictions on those lands. So you would think, okay, that's good enough. Those conservation easements are into perpetuity. They limit what kind of development can take place. This is their way to monetize those things even one step further. This is their way to, to make sure that organizations like the Intrinsic Exchange Group can make massive amounts of money off of selling you chits and impose it yet another layer of restriction, even on your own private property rights. As it says right here, they are looking at doing this in uh, natural or working areas such as national reserves or large scale farmlands. Well, the vast majority of our farmlands are privately owned. Our grazing lands like in the West BLM and Forest Service, those are grazing lands, that's pasture. Those are not farmlands. They are specifically targeting private property rights with these. And then they will determine how they're going to monetize those and what the value is. And they're gonna turn this all over to that private company. Keep in mind, the New York Stock Exchange also has an ownership interest in this particular company in the intrinsic exchange group and the New York Stock Exchange has a seat on their board. So everybody's scratching each other's back. Everybody's trying to figure out how they can monetize our assets to their benefit while also controlling our ability to develop the resources that we have. Again, this is more of that same engineered scarcity and they're all in on it and they're all looking at making a lot of money. Thank you for that answer. Wow. Do you think they'll uh, let you drive through Yellowstone with your your car? I don't know, John. <laughs> I mean, that's 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 the thing. Yeah, they're literally in this rule, despite the fact that the BLM is 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 responsible and statutorily responsible. <clears throat> excuse me for overseeing our BLM lands, and and the National Park Service, the Department of Interior, um, the National Forest Service is responsible in the Department of Ag for our National Forest Service lands. They specifically state in this rule that they are selling the authority to manage these lands to the natural asset companies. These natural asset companies will be responsible and authorized to determine all management decisions on these lands. Well, it sure seems, based on who's probably going to own these companies, that uh, it'll only be in an electric car that you can go through Yellowstone. So mm -hmm. with that, uh, we're going to call it good tonight. And we thank you all for watching. Thank you for submitting your questions. Please continue to do those, and we will address those uh, online. This video will be posted on the Facebook page for the Wyoming Freedom Caucus, as well as on uh, YouTube and Rumble under John Bear for Wyoming. And, uh, you know, we really appreciate this panel. We really appreciate our special guest, uh, Congressman Hageman. We appreciate your being here. And hey, folks, let's fight for Wyoming, America's last hope. That's right. Thank you, everyone. Happy New Year. Happy Thank New you, Year. everyone.